The book takes a look at the iconic style of NBA athletes on and off the court and how it has impacted culture over the decades from Michael Jordan to LeBron James. Each chapter represents a different era. It's called Fly the Big Book of Basketball Fashion and the author Mitchell Jackson is joining us now. Hello. Good morning. Oh, I think we're having issues hearing him. Let's give him a second while we put this together again. The book is called Fly the Big Book of Basketball Fashion. Are you there? You got it. I am here. All Good morning. Right. Good morning. Let's start off by talking about how you sort of came up with this idea and um, this concept of basketball stars impacting culture through what they wore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, to be honest, I can't claim full responsibility for the idea. My publisher actually um, had the idea, but once she mentioned it to me, you know, I thought we're living in the most fashionable era of, of professional sports, and I think the NBA is really the forerunner um, in terms of uh, fashion and, and professional sports leagues. Yeah, let's uh, let's go to Michael Jordan. I remember, I don't remember ever thinking, wow, we're wearing really big suits, but apparently <laughs> that we were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that Jordan influence, certainly the, the big suits. I mean, they were really custom suits, right? The, yeah. uh, the Jordan wore really kind of trickled down. And if you look at the young players that were coming in, Iverson, you look at those draft suits, they were all really emulating uh, Jordan. And then you see some of this stuff coming back now decades later. Okay, next one on the on the list, Bob Cousy. Ah, ah. yeah, so the, the first era is the era of conformists. And so if you think back to what people were dressing like, you know, right after the World War II and, and really pre-civil rights movement, um, you know, they, there was a uniform on and off the court, and it kind of looked like this suit that Cousy's wearing. But in terms of black people, right, this is before civil rights. So, you know, people were being charged with representing their race, quote. Um, mm -hmm. And so that really put a stricture on what you could and couldn't wear, not to mention we had those those mandates still kind of left over from World War II where you couldn't buy certain fabric or you had to wear a certain amount of rubber on your suit or, you know, those kind of deals. Wow. And then from conformist to nonconformist, Bill Walton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that hair. Look at yeah. that good yeah. hair. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, this is, this is post-civil rights. This is Vietnam War era. You know, I think the, the athletes felt a certain amount of freedom and, and were expressing themselves with freedom. And, you know, the analog to this Bill Walton is a guy like Walt Frazier wearing his fedora and his capes and stuff. So I think the guys really took hold of the fe of the, um, the freedom that they felt in that era of fashion. That's so interesting. I would have never thought of this. Allen Iverson is another one that you highlighted. Yes, yes. The Iverson effect. I mean, Look at this guy. I think the lollipop is maybe the most <laughs> expressive part yep. of this flow and the kind of insouciance that you have to have to. I mean, have you ever seen another player with a lollipop on the court? <laughs> right, I don't right. Think so, yeah. And this but uh, that, that's really hip hop. You know, this big jewelry that he's wearing. Yeah. The, the Brits obviously really became prominent in the league. So Iverson is really I mean, he might be the most impactful player in terms of NBA fashion over mm. the over the course of the league. And I think that was also about the time when tattoos started to become a big thing. Did did yeah. NBA officials ever step in and said, OK, we we need to regulate or censure or something because this is not good for our image. Yeah, that's what we got the dress code, right, which is a lot of people credit Iverson with being the catalyst for the dress code. Um, but there was also that that brawl that happened in, uh, in Indiana, the malice in the palace. Um, and I think, you know, Iverson was really kind of the face of the league for a little while. Right. in that when it was switching over from the Jordan era. And so I think that the league probably was looking at a, a template in Jordan that was being kind of erased in Iverson yeah. and, and he was dressing and they needed to get a hold of that. So, yeah. you know, they got young guys like D. Wade coming in, dressing like uh -huh. Iverson, getting into their career and then moving on to what we see now. Okay, we've got a, another one, Russell Westbrook. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, this is the Tom Brown kilt or slash skirt, which is really prominent. I think the really fashion forward players, um, most of them have tried this look. Um, and I think we also have to connect this look to what's happening in the LGBTQ and, you know, this really redefining of what masculinity um, looks like in gender. So, you know, kudos to them for, for accepting that challenge as being kind of um, examples in what masculinity looks like in professional mm -hmm. sports. Well, we couldn't do an NBA fashion segment without talking Walt Frazier. So, th boy, this is about <laughs> as understated as Walt Frazier gets. I, yeah, I, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, he's missing the patterns, but, the, you yeah. know, this is the 70s. But, you know, he got the long gold chain. He has a cape. Like, 
The only person <laughs> to remember wearing a cape yeah. was James Brown. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is so great. All right. So we're going to scroll through some of the other pictures that we've got. Um, what's what's coming down the line, right? So what are other NBA players that you're watching for maybe yeah. a book in the future about fashion? Yeah, well, I think the thing about fashion is it's so cyclical, right? So so I don't I can't necessarily say what's coming next, but whatever it is, it's already behind us, yeah. right? It's going to be some reflection of what has already occurred. Yes, and I yes. would say because we are dressing up or a lot of the players are dressing up, I think they will go back to a kind of casual look like if you think about guys like even your Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan, or you look at what uh, Carmelo was wearing before he left the league, there's a lot of guys who are really into casual luxury, like mm. almost like pants. Um, so I think there might be a move towards that mm. uh, in the future. Very good. For more on Mitchell and the big book of basketball fashion, you can check out his website. There it is on your screen or follow him on the social. So great to talk to you. Thanks for uh, sharing the book with us. Yeah, thank you for having me.